Hey there, thanks for tuning in. I'm Evan Mazunik, and this is yet another Sound Painting Saturday, where every week I get on air and talk about anything related to sound painting and my absolute love and passion and obsession for working with the sign language to compose live. And I love composing live not only in music but across disciplines. I've recently started to really enjoy revisiting working with uh, dance and working across disciplines, not just in music. And recently I've been having some great, fascinating conversations with several other sound painters, in fact, multiple sound painters, about dance and about using dance and using movement and movers in a composition. And I find it utterly fascinating. And one thing that often comes up in our discussions is uh, this issue or problem of dancers feeling a real obligation to always be facing downstage no matter which way they're moving. So you've got sort of this, all the sight lines are understandably focused towards where the sound painter is located, which is usually in front of them. So there are many ways to address this problem and many ways to work with it, but one way I've started to work uh, and consider, and I'm gonna explore continuing to work, is uh, something called watch mode. And again, there are many ways to work on this problem of dancers always feeling they've got to catch every gesture and always be looking at you. And of course, you can always mention that, uh, respond to what you see. And if you don't see it, don't respond to it. But one way to really make that choice and that part of your work very explicit is to work with watch mode. And it's very simple. You could use it either as a rehearsal technique to really free up the dancers and or you can use it as a compositional choice in a performance or uh, in a final showing of what you're doing uh, to really get something very exciting and very based off of chance and risk and a lot of surprise to use a sound painter. So what is watch mode? Watch mode is simply you hold up a gesture and as soon as a dancer happens to see it they start and they initiate. So the go gesture is really when they catch the gesture. So say people are repeating material and you just hold up change. And you hold it up there and whoever happens to catch that change begins to change as soon as they see it. If they don't see it, they don't respond to it. And if you take it down, it's now not active anymore. In the sense of those people who already changed continue their new material and those people who haven't yet seen that gesture, it's not as if it never existed. So you could do the same with a long tone. Any sustained movement, as soon as a dancer comes in and they see that gesture and it enters their field of vision, they immediately go as if the gesture living here is the go gesture. In some sense, it's very similar to launch mode with one difference. In launch mode, as soon as the gesture disappears, it's no longer part of the composition. Working in watch mode, as soon as a dancer happens to see it, they jump on board on the gesture and they continue with that gesture until something new comes along. And when the gesture disappears, those who already responded to said gesture continue with the material and people who haven't seen it don't change what they're doing. So if you have any questions, I would love, as always, to hear from you. You can either comment below this video or if you're watching this on Bliss Street Studios on the blog, you can comment on the blog or always send me an email. Uh, I'm also available on Skype, emazunik, M-A-Z-U-N-I-K, on Skype. It's a great way to catch me. Thank you for tuning in. Let me know how it goes, and I will see you next week.